Welcome back to Basic Havoc. My name's Logan Shepard. I'll be your guide for this refresher course. This training will take you through tactical movement, weaponry usage, vehicle piloting, and base operations. You can move forward, back, strafe left, and strafe right with the movement keys. All of your controls can be customized to suit your taste via the options menu. Practice moving around, then meet me in the next section. Here you'll learn about jumping and climbing. Pressing the jump key makes you jump. To climb a ladder, approach the ladder and press the action key. Now it's time for a test. Climb this ladder and jump to the opposite crate. Looks like you've got it. Now, let's cover your EVA unit. That device on your left arm is called EVA, short for Electronic Video Assistant. The most important thing EVA does is track mission objectives. I'll activate your first mission objective. Notice EVA announced the objective and indicated the location on your radar in the lower left-hand corner with a green star. Mission objectives come in three different varieties primary, secondary, and hidden objectives. The green star indicates a primary mission objective. Objectives of this type must be completed for mission success. The data link includes a map, mission data, and a dynamically updated combat database. You can access any data link screen by pressing the EVA key, which activates the most recently viewed EVA page. That covers it for EVA. Just remember to refer back to your data links whenever you need tactical information. During missions, the action key can be used to interact with people and equipment. You can talk to a soldier by using the action key. Ask the soldier at the exit to open the gate, and we'll move on. Standing by. This door requires level now, one Now, I'll show you how clearance. to use security cards. Notice the color of this door. You'll need a green security card to open it. Yellow doors will require yellow cards, and red doors require red cards. Here's a green security card. This is the advanced guard tower. It provides automated base defenses. Now, head inside and down the elevator. Sydney is waiting for you there. Hey Havoc, here you will learn more about your electronic video assistant, EVA for short. On the bottom of your display are two meters, one for health and one for armor. As you take damage, these meters decrease. Armor reduces the amount of damage you take. Here's an example. Watch what happens when I shoot you. Hey, is that necessary? Notice your health has decreased. As it gets lower, the meter turns yellow, then red to indicate you are near death. Now it's time for power-ups. This is a health power-up. Pick it up and I'll continue. As long as you're not gonna shoot me again. Your health meter is full again. Now let's try an armor power-up. Pick this one up and I'll continue. Now your armor meter is full, meaning your armor is completely intact. Now watch your health and armor meters again. You wanna oh. cut that out? That's the last time. <laughs> Honest. Notice how your armor was damaged, but you lost less health. Okay, you should be clear on power-ups, so let's move on to your radar. In addition to mission objectives, your radar shows the position of infantry, vehicles, and buildings. Radar shows your immediate surroundings, but your overhead map provides a more strategic view. Press the map key to take a look at your overhead map. Infantry appear as circles. Note the yellow circle showing my position on the radar. GDI units appear in yellow. Nod units in red. Neutral units appear in white. Watch the red triangle representing the Nod vehicle as it passes on the radar. Notice the yellow square indicating the position of this GDI building. Actually, it's showing the position of the Master Control Terminal, but we'll cover it later. Don't want to confuse the grunt, huh? Building operations are part of another tutorial. Speaking of other tutorials, let's get moving. I'll have Eva highlight your next mission objective. Back to the tour bus. I'll catch you later. She likes me. 
This is the infantry barracks. Inside, Gunner will explain weaponry basics. I have a Gunner! Long time, pal. What you got for me? This is the infantry barracks where we process recruits. Nod has an equivalent building called Hand of Nod. We'll be using this infantry barracks in the firing range out back for weaponry training. This first weapon is the Vervac Commando Elite Falcon Automatic Pistol. Select it by pressing the handguns key and head out back to the firing range. Notice your targeting reticle has an outer circle and an inner dot. The outer circle shows where you're pointing the weapon. The inner dot shows where the weapon will actually hit. You may have an obstacle in the way which prevents you from targeting properly. Point the automatic pistol at any target on the range. When you have a valid target, the reticle turns red. If you're reloading or out of ammunition, the reticle turns yellow. Further information about your target is displayed near the targeting brackets. Point the weapon at any target and press primary fire. Aim for the head to maximize the damage dealt per shot. Shoot all the targets in the range and we'll cover sniper rifle training. Next is the Vervac R59 Pierce sniper rifle. Select the sniper rifle by pressing the sniper weapons key. This weapon serves two functions. Accurate long range targeting and sound detection. Use secondary fire to activate the scope. You can zoom in and out using the zoom control keys. The weapon is equipped with a directional microphone which can pick up conversations at long ranges. Use secondary fire again to deactivate the scope. Only your automatic pistol has infinite ammunition. You need to watch ammunition for other weapons, like this sniper rifle. The remaining ammunition in your clip and the total count of remaining ammunition is shown at the bottom of your display. Another indicator of ammo loss is your targeting reticle. If it turns yellow, you are either in need of reloading or out of ammunition. Red means fire, yellow means I need ammo, gotcha. To reload a weapon, press the reload key. If you need more ammunition, a power-up is ready near the firing range. Eliminate all targets and come back for the automatic rifle. The next weapon is the Corbretti AR-70 Raptor Automatic Rifle. Use the automatic weapons key to select this weapon. This is good stuff, Gunner, but when do we get to the real explosives? Eliminate the targets and then come back for more exotic weaponry. Next up is the Sackles A 66mm Type R12 Locust Automatic Rocket Launcher. Select this weapon by pressing the Rocket Launcher key. Now you're talking. Take your time destroying all the targets. Come back in when you're done. Let's move on to your line of work. Press the mines key for remote C4 explosive. Use primary fire to place the C4 charge on a target. Then, move to a safe distance before detonating with your secondary fire. This is a lot to swallow in one sitting. You'll get it. You're a quick study. We have one last item. Come back when all targets have been destroyed. This last item is the GS-2 Godsend Satellite Targeting Device, otherwise known as the Ion Cannon Beacon. This is used to guide orbiting Ion Cannon satellites to their targets. Nod has a similar device known as a Nuclear Strike Beacon. You can guess what it's for. Select the beacon, head out to the firing range and place it in the location designated by the objective marker on your radar. Arm and plant the Ion Cannon Beacon by using primary fire. Arming a beacon takes a few moments, so you'll have to stay put till the arming meter has completed its sequence. 
Once the beacon is set, retreat to a safe distance to avoid damage from the ion cannon blast. After you're done, head in and I'll send you on your way. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. That's not all the weaponry you'll encounter, but these instructions should get you started. Now, I believe you to go to the weapons factory. I'll indicate your next location on your radar. Stay safe out there, mate. Thanks for the class, Gunner. I'll see you on the field. This is the weapons factory. Head inside and Hotwire will continue your instruction. Don't wait up for me. Wish I didn't have to, sir. A pleasure to work with you again, Havoc. This is the weapons factory. The weapons factory controls vehicle production at your base. Nod uses a different approach. They rely on airstrips instead of weapons factories. When you see an empty vehicle on the battlefield, Climb inside and use it to your advantage. Head outside and approach the Humvee. While facing the door of the vehicle, press the action key. The first person in the vehicle is the driver. Next is the gunner. Others are passengers if the vehicle carries other personnel. If you are the only person in the vehicle, you are simultaneously driving and gunning. Aim the machine gun with the targeting reticle and drive with the movement keys. Press forward to accelerate and backward to brake or reverse. Take the Humvee around the entire track to complete the next objective. Follow the blue stars on your radar. Come back inside the factory and we'll continue. Next vehicle is the medium tank. This is a treaded vehicle, meaning it turns tighter and has more armor, but is slower than wheeled vehicles. The controls are very similar. Take it for a spin around the track, then meet up with Logan for the next lesson. You can squish infantry units with some vehicles. Here are some targets for you to practice squishing. This is the Tiberium Refinery. Dr. Mobius will explain its operation inside. Come back when you're done. Welcome, welcome. I am Dr. Ignatio Mobius. This is the Tiberium Refinery, a processing center for Tiberium harvests. 
All base operations and production rely upon the harvesting of Tiberium. Simply put, Tiberium is the primary source of income for your base. The same is true for Nod. Tiberium itself is still a mystery I have yet to solve, but we do know it collects valuable minerals from the surrounding area. Suffice to say, Tiberium is valuable. The important thing to know is it is also harmful to human tissue. Stay away from it or expect damage. Go outside and meet with the officer. He will continue your tour of the facilities. You ready? Our next stop is the power plant. Follow me. This is the power plant. Head inside for the briefing. Meet me here when you're done. My name is Elena Petrova. This is not my normal field of work, so I'm going to make this quick. This is the power plant. It supplies power to other buildings. Destroying a power plant will shut down other structures. Watch what happens when the power plant is disabled. Some of the affected buildings will have slower operation and production. Others shut off entirely. Keep in mind, not every building requires power to function. We are finished. Meet up with your guide outside. That's it. My job's done, sir. Captain Parker, I'm Lieutenant Moss. To show the effects of building destruction, let's start a simulated Nod assault. Let's continue. Destroying a building from the exterior is difficult, especially when the building is under repair. Notice the GDI engineer working on the master control terminal inside. Master what? Master control terminal. The heart of a building. This is what happens when a building is destroyed. Once a building is destroyed, it can no longer be repaired. You can complete the tutorial by eliminating the Nod officers, who are coordinating reinforcements. You'll recognize them when you see them, but your reticle information will tell you for sure. If you need more weaponry or armor, you will find power-ups throughout the base. 